Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. As a physician, you've heard the phrase individualizing hormone therapy, and, and that's become a mantra for us, but what exactly does it mean? And to help us sort through what this means, I'm joined by Dr. Peter Schnatz. Welcome, Peter. Hi, Marla. Peter is the Associate Chairman and Residency Program Director in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the Reading Hospital in Pennsylvania, and as well, he practices at the Sydney Kimmel Medical College at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. So we have a couple of catchphrases that as physicians we hear. Lowest dose for the shortest period of time, individualizing hormone therapy. And that, they're nice sound bites, but what do they actually mean to the practicing physician who's sitting across a reluctant woman in his office who's very symptomatic and looking for some answers? Right. Yeah, this is a really interesting area. It's interesting on one hand, but it's also challenging because as you pointed out, our patients are confused. And I think we have to step back for a minute and hormonal therapy had kind of taken on this mystique of becoming almost a fountain of youth that mm -hmm. where patients really wanted to be on it because they heard it's going to help them live longer. There was actually a book written called Feminine Forever mm -hmm. that was about hormonal therapy and kind of giving women this idea that if they took it, they could live forever and, and avoid menopause. That leads credence to the other phrase, if it sounds too good to be true, right. it is too yeah. good to be true. Right. And you know, part of the, the dilemma that came up in there is that this momentum build and, and a lot of physicians who may not have necessarily been a women's health expert were beginning to prescribe because it, again, it had this kind of mystique of being almost like a vitamin and not mm -hmm. really a medication. But then we know the HERS and the WHI studies came out and really changed our understanding of the, the total risk benefit package of hormonal therapy. But yet, as time has gone forward and we've been able to look at the Women's Health Initiative and look at the different ages, we're most interested in those women between the ages of 50, 49 to 59, let's say, right. as opposed to the average age of the woman who was 63 in that study. So what right. have we learned yeah. that, that has really pushed us in the direction of shortest dose, short time, individualization? What does that mean? Right. And so that's key. What you said there is the approved indications that we know for hormonal therapy are hot flashes, night sweats, um, atrophic vaginitis, bone loss, but those, that's used in younger women at the time of menopause. Those studies we alluded to were in 63-year-old women, much older population. And so one of the most important things we've learned is what we refer to as the timing hypothesis, that women who are younger, closer to the time of menopause, have a, a much different risk profile, much safer Mm -hmm. compared to the older patients who are further from the time of menopause. So that's part of the individualization. Right. Age is one of those most important factors that we look at. But then there is now a whole host of different routes of administration, mm -hmm. not only oral, which was typically what we looked at, transdermal, gels, right. intravaginal, um, being able to give progesterone through an IUD. Mm -hmm. How do we sort through that? Right. And as you alluded to, individualization. It's not a one-size-fits-all. So we look at the patient, her indication, her age, how close she is to the time of menopause. Does she have any other risk factors? So as you alluded to, the transdermal route of administration misses the first pass effect through the liver. And so there's a very different effect on cholesterol and um, clotting factors. Um, now, while we don't have good prospective studies on transdermal versus oral, there are quite a bit of data suggesting that the risk of clotting um, is much lower in that route of administration. So in a patient, for example, who's a smoker or overweight, right. would that move you in one direction or another? Right. You would, you would tend to go in that direction if your patient uh, was, had an indication for hormonal therapy. More to a transdermal than right. oral necessarily. Yeah. And the other, the other thing I'll point out, because you alluded to lowest dose for the shortest duration. And that phrase really kind of originated from some of the initial fear and, and concerns that were hyped through the media um, rollout of this data. As we've put this data together, gotten a much better understanding, there are some patients who need hormones for years. If you have a 35-year-old patient who's had her ovaries removed and we deprive her of the estrogen she needs to maintain her bone health and her vascular health, that's very unfortunate, and there are many women who, because of the, the fears, are not taking hormones for those important years that they need that. 
And on the other end of the age spectrum, although we often talk about most women six years plus and then the hot flashes get better, there are some women where it never gets better. Right. And that shortest dose for the shortest period of time has <coughs> them confused. So the way I like to phrase it with patients is that we want to use the appropriate dose. Better than the lowest dose. With the appropriate route right. for the appropriate duration, like we do for any medication. And that seems to make such uh, such a, a clearer message. Right. The appropriate dose for you, yep. the appropriate route for you, maybe right. oral, maybe transdermal, maybe not, right. for the appropriate length of time based on your symptoms. Individualization. Great message. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you.